Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode and back in the purple potting shed. Um, we've been actually having a little bit of a heat wave here in the UK the past week and it's been absolutely hot to our standards anyway because we're not really ready you know we're never prepared for this heat and um, a lot of us do suffer in it <laughs> just because you know it's it's not really natural to be that hot in the UK but um I've come up the allotment it's about half past six now and it's so so nice it's so cool and oh, so so peaceful but um, I just wanted to get a few little jobs done today and I thought I'd do a little bit of a vlog as well. There's not actually much to talk about <laughs> um, and there's not much to show you um, in, in terms of things that I've been buying um, for the allotment. Um, but I thought I'd have a little chat in the shed um, before I do a couple of jobs. I've just actually put the sprinkler on to do a little bit of watering because I've been away in Wales for the past four days which I think was well needed because oh, I've just been feeling so overwhelmed lately with everything, like not just work. I mean, work has been so hectic um, the past couple of months with all the garden shows that we've been doing. Um, and of course we're still selling online as well. But um, it's just, I think I'm trying, I'm still, I mean, I've said this before, but I'm still pulling myself in too many different directions. Um, and sometimes it just gets a little bit too much. And I came up the allotment one evening, um, a couple of evenings ago now. <laughs> um, and oh, I just felt completely overwhelmed with everything. Um, and even though the allotment is doing so well and I am so chuffed with it, just on that evening, I just felt like, you know, I hadn't planned it very well. You know, for instance, the sugar snap peas haven't been picked as regularly as I wished that they had. Um, and I was thinking, oh, I shouldn't have grown peas because I haven't been here to pick them. And it's just things like that. Um, so I went uh, to Wales for four days. Um, I helped Charles with the hay and just had a really nice time. It was nice to, to get away for a little bit. But I am refreshed and ready to go and get busy on the allotment again. Um, and oh my gosh, it's just, it's looking really, really nice. Um, if you don't, you know, look at the weeds and look at the sugar snap peas that are sort of half dying. Um, I think you just need to focus on the good parts. Um, and I mean, the sweet peas are starting to come into life now. And the, the lavender's in bloom. Um, I'm actually going to dig up some potatoes today because they're an early salad variety called International Kidney. Um, so they're ready to be harvested. So I'm going to pull a couple of them up today because we're going to have a barbecue tomorrow, um, a family barbecue. So I thought I'll have some homegrown potatoes with butter and mint. And oh, God, I cannot wait. So hopefully <laughs> they've been growing okay underground. And I also need to harvest my gooseberries because um, they were actually ready i came up here uh the morning i went to wales um and they were ready you know they they were a little bit soft to touch so um i didn't have time to pick them then so i thought oh fingers crossed they'll be okay until i get back so i'm going to pick them today i don't think i've got an awful amount <laughs> of gooseberries um i bought a new jam pan and I thought, oh, you know, I'll make some gooseberry jam. So we'll, we'll see, you know, we might have enough to make jam. If not, then, you know, there's plenty of other things to make jam out of. <laughs> My dad's got loads of rhubarb, for instance. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to do some watering today. Oh yeah, and plant out my purple sprouting broccoli, which is ready to go out. Now there's four of these to go into the brassica cage now and they're called clarette and i grew them the year before last they were amazing so so good um so i'll be putting four in one row today and that's the brassica cage done um and 
um what else is there there's a gherkin to plant out which i need to try and buy from a garden center because my dad threw mine in the bin um but i think apart from the gherkin that's everything planted out now what i am going to do when i harvest my potatoes because usually i do like a second growing season and when the potatoes come out i put in uh, some leeks and some swiss chard but usually I dig up my potatoes when I need them and then it gets to around, you know, August time. And then I put my leeks in and usually there's not enough time for the leeks to fatten up. So what I might do this year <laughs> is harvest, you know, two rows of potatoes in one go and um, take them home because they'll be perfectly fine in storage. We're, we're going to use them pretty quickly anyway because... Uh, there's only four rows of potatoes there, <laughs> so um, they, they don't last very long. But um, yeah, I'm going to harvest two rows of potatoes and then put my leeks in and then harvest the next two rows and put my Swiss chard in. So they've got enough time then in the growing season to actually grow. But what I found with Swiss chard is I had some Swiss chard growing from uh, around February and it suffered so much in this heat and because I've been busy with work and going to Wales I you know I haven't really had the time to come up here and, and water the allotment as much as I would like even though I've been doing it more this year than any other year um, but yeah the Swiss chard bolted because it's been so so hot so I dug that up and I'm thinking now Swiss chard for me is just going to be something that I sow and grow you know July time because it's just there's no point in growing it if it's just going to bolt. <laughs> um, also, my radish bolted quite a lot as well, which I was so upset about. But um, there's enough there for four rows, so I might just dig them all up now and, and re-sow them. And maybe while we're away at the shows and things, get my mum up here to just water the containers. Because they're the things that dry out the quickest. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to spend a couple of hours up here this morning because I'm going for afternoon tea <laughs> with my mum um, in in town. So um, that would be nice. It would be nice to spend some quality time with her because she doesn't like the garden or the allotment. Uh, she doesn't come up here. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to some scones and lots of cake. <laughs> it would be really nice. Um, but... There is a book that I wanted to share with you um, and it's a little bit themed I guess because it is, well, it is the season but we've just missed the elderflower season now. But um, it is by Alice Fowler who I've talked to you about before and it's called The Thrifty Forager. The, her set, I've got three of her books, um, The Thrifty Forager, The Edible Garden, What's the other one? I always forget. Always forget. It's gone. It's gone. Anyway, I've got three of her books. And I absolutely love her. And I also love foraging. So um, this is, I think this is like, I don't know, about five or so years old now. Um, and it, I, I bought it when I just got into foraging. Because my dad was walking around the village and he came home with like a little fruit and I looked through Alice Fowler's book and it turned out to be a cherry plum. And they were growing in this, you know, set of garages down in the village. Um, and there's two, well, there's actually two trees there and then there's one along the path. And oh my gosh, I go there every single year now. They are the most delicious things. And we make, which is, I think is actually in this book, a, um, a cherry plum tart and it is so delicious and it's like it's a must now every single year I don't know if it's in this one or if it's in another one but yeah oh here it is cherry plum tart it is honestly the most delicious thing um, and I also make cherry plum jam as well so they'll they'll be um they'll be ready to pick about August time now um, but yeah, I absolutely love foraging and I love Alice Fowler um, and 
I'm sure if you you like my videos then you you will no doubt absolutely love Alice Fowler because she is amazing um, but it's a really good book and it also has um, references for different foraging goodies it just makes you want to get out there and have a look and see what you can find um, and forage because it is so much fun I and mean, I actually went and foraged some elderflower gosh it seems like ages ago now but it's probably about a couple of weeks ago um something I always try and do elderflower is my favorite all-time forage treat so I always try and go out and do it and this year it's funny because um the the place I usually go to pick my elderflower in the village um it's only like a five minute bicycle ride away <laughs> it's usually slim pickings um but when we dropped off some parcels at the shop, I said to my dad, oh, I'll drive round now and just check on the elderflower. So we drove round the long way and came across the mother load of elderflower. Like, I cannot believe how much was there. And the funny thing is, if I had carried on walking for like another two minutes around this bend from my usual elderflower spot, I would have come across this sooner. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I picked absolutely loads of elderflower heads. Um, I made sure to leave some for the wildlife um, and also they'll obviously turn into elderberries later on in the year as well. But I made, um, oh gosh, 30 or so bottles of elderflower champagne, which is actually probably ready now. It takes about two weeks for it to be ready. So yeah, Ooh, I'm going to bring a bottle of that up, I think, <laughs> one evening and just sit on the pot and drink um, a glass of elderflower champagne. And yeah, I made elderflower champagne. I also um, experimented with elderflower and strawberry vodka, which I need to bottle up now. Um, and I also made strawberry and elderflower cordial and elderflower cordial as well, because cordial is the thing to make with elderflower. It's so, so delicious. Um, and you can use it in so many different things. Like you, not only can you add it to, you know, water or lemonade, with a little bit of gin or something like that but you can add it to cake mixtures um jams um biscuits you can make jelly with it like it's honestly you need to get out and make some elderflower cordial um so yeah i've got about 12 bottles of cordial but i'm planning on doing a couple of recipes up in the shed uh, using the little oven <laughs> if, if i find a bit of spare time that is um but yeah there's not really much else to talk about <laughs> so um yeah it's just been so busy and i've just been cracking on with with so many different projects and things um but it's nice it was nice to get away for wales for a few days but equally it's nice to to come back and to see the allotment because i do really miss it when i go to wales and um, but then i miss wales when i'm here so you know whew, you can't win <laughs> Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plant out my four purple sprouting into the brassica cage and then I'm going to harvest my gooseberries and my potatoes so it's always interesting. Potatoes is a must have for growing on the allotment. Um, but it's one of those crops where you think oh are they doing okay and like I've been meaning to give them a little bit of a tickle um, for the past couple of weeks now just to see if there's anything there um, because obviously the growth on top has been beautiful and, and lovely, but you just don't know what's growing underneath. And it's like finding buried treasure. So, um, yeah, I might dig up a couple of plants and then maybe one evening this week come up and pull up the two rows and then I can plant my leeks out, like I was saying. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with, with how the allotment is coming. I am happy. I just, I think the other evening was just, I was just feeling a bit down um, but like I said if you focus on the good bits um, then it should be fine <laughs> everything's gone to plan everything yeah everything's sort of gone to plan let me just look at the plan there's a couple of gaps in the flower bed actually which I'm a little bit disappointed with because my fever few didn't germinate um, there's a massive massive gap here there's nothing growing there so I keep thinking oh, I'll go to a garden centre and buy a couple of flowers 
but everything else the poppies didn't really come up as well as I hoped they would either but I mean it, it's looking better than it did last year last year we were just so unorganized yeah everything's yeah everything's sort of gone to plan apart from there was a courgette <laughs> actually I planted two courgettes one yellow variety called Parador and one green one called Black Beauty um, and then there was a pumpkin in front um, and then a squash behind which goes through the sweet corn <laughs> oh, I planted them all out at the same time but when I bought them up the allotment I knocked over the tray <laughs> and the seedlings went everywhere so I put them back in what I thought was the right order. Turns out that the pumpkin that I planted out wasn't a pumpkin it was in fact another courgette. <laughs> so I've got two yellow parador courgettes um, and no Tom Fox pumpkin which I'm so annoyed about because I was looking forward to, to growing a few pumpkins on the plot. So yeah I'm going to be a bit over on with with courgettes but um Never mind. There could there's worse things in life, isn't there, really? So yeah. Plant out my brassicas, uh, my purple sprouting and then harvest a few things. So exciting. So exciting. Um but yeah, actually I'll probably walk you through it. I was gonna say bye then, but I'll I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> really starting to warm up now and it's only about half past eight so um I think the thing to do is to come up to the apartment really early in the morning because it was so cool this morning um, and obviously you can't work in this heat um, so early in the morning is the way to go I think and I keep saying to my dad to come up early in the morning or you know in the evenings when it's a bit cooler um, but he's not up here yet. He's probably not awake yet. <laughs> um, but anyway, I've harvested quite a lot from the plot today. Um, I'm so, so pleased. Now the gooseberries, there were a lot more gooseberries on one bush than the other bush. I have two gooseberry bushes in the fruit cage. Um, they are five years old, um, but this is the first time I've ever taken a proper harvest from them because well, this is the second year the fruit cage has been netted, but it's really the first year that I've been properly um, tying up the the um, entrance to it. Um, because the previous year the birds were getting in through the open gateway and they were taking uh, all the gooseberries. So I've never tasted a gooseberry ever. So um, I'm really pleased with this this little basket full. I'm not sure if there's going to be enough there to make jam, we'll see, but there's plenty of other things to make with gooseberries so I'm excited to try some recipes out. Um, oh, so so happy. Um, and while I was in the fruit cage I thought I'd have a look at the black currants because there's four black currant uh, Ben Lomond bushes in there. Um, and there were quite a few ripe ones and I've actually missed a few as well, they were all shriveled. Um, so I've picked the ones which were ripe and I filled this bowl up here. Um, but what I might do, because there's loads more that are waiting to ripen, they're still green. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pop these in the freezer probably um, and then wait until the rest on the bush um, have, have ripened and then I will make some blackcurrant jam because my dad really, really loves blackcurrant jam. So I'll pop them in the freezer and just wait for the others. Um, it shouldn't be too long, but... um. Yeah, that was a nice little surprise. Um, so the potato situation, I was a little bit disappointed with. I dug up four potato plants um, and there's about 20 potatoes there. One, the first plant in the first row had four small potatoes on. 
So when I dug that up, I was thinking, oh no, <laughs> this doesn't look so good. Um, but then the last plant I dug up today, uh, this morning, there were loads on it. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but still so happy to get anything. Um, and they're really nice, really, really nice. You, you cannot beat homegrown potatoes. You really, really can't. Um, so these will be served up for our family barbecue tomorrow uh, with lots of butter and I'll cut some spearmint as well. So oh, looking forward to that. So there's gooseberries, potatoes, black currants. I might also cut my alliums. Um, they're starting to die back now and because they're on those really long stems, I was worried that they were going to uh, snap. Um, and someone told me that they've cut theirs off, they've hung them in the shed um, and they're just letting them dry out. And I've heard that the seed heads are beautiful. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they look like when they're dry. But yeah, I'll hang them in the shed now um, by their stems just to let them dry out. Um, and then they can go in a vase and look pretty all winter long. <laughs> And I also cut some sweet peas because the sweet peas are really starting to take off on the archway now. Um, and Ami Magus. I'm so glad that I decided to grow that this year. It's been absolutely amazing and it's so prolific. There's so many flower heads on there waiting to be cut. Um, and I think it looks especially pretty with the sweet peas. Mm. So I'm going to take these home and pop them in a little jar of water um, and take all my harvests home as well. Oh, cannot wait for that barbecue, cannot wait. But first of all, there's afternoon tea to look forward to. Uh, so I'm going to head on home now um, and head off for some cream, cream scones and a nice cup of tea. <laughs> but I really hope you enjoyed that video. Um, there's hopefully going to be lots more coming up, lots more harvests as well. Um, but I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.